Shannon. And I'm Rob. Welcome to Build Up, the show about shows between the shows. We have Daniel Francesi here to talk about his Yas, your amazing comedy tour. Uh, yes, that was an amazing introduction, Thank Rob. Thank you. Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. But is anyone here as amazing as Daniel, Daniel Francesi? Huh? Anyone? Uh, uh, anyone here? Anyone here? Woo! We want to know. Up your self-confidence, please. Yes. Say you're amazing. You should at least be trying to be as amazing yeah, as Daniel Francesi. at least just fake it till you make it, people. Uh, I mean, it's New fake York. It, Come fake on. It. Come let's on. Let's do it. Well, we wanted to play a little game called, yes, you're, you're amazing. amazing. Can we get a volunteer? We should have a volunteer. Uh, sir, oh, yes, oh, yeah. please come up. He's so confident. He's swagging oh, his way it. Yeah. up to the stage. He's, he's already ready amazing. He waved to be at us. Proved. Yes, oh, he's ready to go. You. Come on, right in between right us. In the Hi. Middle. You guys are both amazing. Whoa, oh my God, you're thank amazing. you. Wow. I love these. Compliment. You know, I've just been sitting here so long. Really? Yes. How long have you been in the studio? I can't say. <gasps> okay. No, have you okay, been growing? Are you just like some mold that grew into an amazing man from the couch? You should see my nails. I need to get them done. Oh my After gosh. This. They okay. still look so great. We'll see, strong yeah. nails. <laughs> yeah. Strong look, nails, yeah. strong personalities. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Strong posture. Great style. Wow. Dang, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, you're making us look bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm intimidated. Saying. I think this man's coming for our jobs. Maybe. No. Wow. Okay. okay. That was, that's yeah. amazing. That was yeah. I feel like you're like the, uh, like, you know, those apps where you take two people's faces and it's like, this is what your baby would look like. Mm-hmm. I feel like you actually look like if you put us in that app, this is our son. Whoa. <laughs> Wait, should we, should we do a reveal? Yeah, like, you should do that, yeah. <laughs> All right, which one's Irish, which one's Filipino? Are you Irish Filipino? Yes, I am. Oh, my God. What a great mix. Papa. Yeah, cool. Awesome. I'm Irish Puerto Rican. It's kind oh, of I see similar. the freckles. Yeah. Yes. That's good. nice. Good. I like it. Great vibe. I'm just boring white. Don't Can worry we cut about you it. Out? Yes. <laughs> this is a crusty white man. But you know what? You need love too. I thank you. Sometimes. <laughs> Why is that so funny? <laughs> So should we get to playing this game? Yeah. I don't know. I, I think, how do you feel about your, uh, okay, we will, we'll explain what we're going to do here. Okay, yeah. We're going to read down. you, we're going to read you these questions and you need to answer exactly like Daniel would answer. And if you answer correctly, that means you are amazing. Okay. So you're going to love it and you're going to kill it. Okay. All right. All right. Ready? The first question is. In addition to being a movie star and comedian, you want to start a side business, okay? Do you, one, become a reptile handler for birthday parties? Create an erotic pottery company? Become creative director of a delivery-based clothing company? Or make a bottled water company called Tap That? Erotic pottery. You know, that is an amazing choice, but that's not the Daniel amazing That's my choice. choice. <laughs> yeah, he's all defensive now. That's more choice. <laughs> I oh. am amazing. Don't tell me I'm not amazing. It's true. You're still amazing. You're still amazing. But within the rules of this game, you can't technically be super amazing unless you choose the exact same answer that Daniel would. Copy that. All right, next one. Well, In we didn't a- tell him the answer. Oh, we didn't. The oh, correct right. answer is become creative director of a delivery-based clothing company called Winston Box Clothing Company. Yeah, isn't that cool? He has a side company. I didn't hear the Winston Box part at the end of the, now I'm just being defensive. It's called Winston yeah. Box Clothing Company. So sign up for it, you'll get some awesome clothing and you'll support Daniel who is amazing. He's the creative director, so yeah. probably has some good style in there. I checked it out, it's good, you should do it. Next question, are you ready? Yes. All right, you better be. In addition to doing stand-up comedy and acting for film and TV, your next dream is to A, become the mini golf champion of the world, B, be the head chef at a five-star restaurant, C, star in a Broadway play, or D, no more dreams. You're all out of dreams. Well, I think the most amazing would be to star in a Broadway play. Yes! You're yes, amazing. you're amazing. You got it. That's correct. I like correct. it. I saw your eyes go to my car. And I, I saw like, the highlighted oh. answer. Whoa. Oh, I saw it. It's okay. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Just called being inventive, yeah. creative, innovative. You know what? It's amazing that you cheated in this zero stakes game. I love it. Mm-hmm. I think that's amazing. Mm-hmm. And and the fact that you're a fighter like that. And I, I think it's it. amazing that you held the card for it enough that I could see the proper answer. Yeah, I trusted you. I'm observant. I'll never do that again. 
It takes dedication. Hold it up in front of you like this. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. Now I'm ready. I'm ready now. I'm really ready now. Don't trust him. Wait. Well, I'm curious, Shannon. What kind of company or what would be your next dream if you had accomplished all these things already? Um, if I accomplished everything that Daniel had mm -hmm. accomplished, I'd feel so good. I'd feel like I could just die happy. But you know what? To end it on a high note, I'd probably get extensive reconstructive facial surgery to be a cat. Oh, that is amazing. That's a different I know. kind of amazing. <laughs> yeah. Nine lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you get that surgery, can you just like also just use a litter box judge free as a person? Never mind. Next question. <laughs> All right, let's do a really fun one. Yes. Okay, let's say you're at a party and you need a trick to show off, okay? Because it's kind of dying down. Do you realistically imitate dog barks? Ooh. Ride a unicycle in the nude? Ooh. Eat marbles? Oh, shit. Or fart Britney Spears Toxic from beginning to end? Maybe ride a unicycle. Naked? Yeah. Ooh, it was incorrect. Yeah, the answer would be realistically imitate dog barks, which Daniel is amazing at. Yes, yes, it's true, yeah. isn't that? But don't you secretly wish that you could actually fart Britney Spears' toxic and be like, <laughs> it'd be so cool. I'm gonna work on that trick so bad. <laughs> Especially since she performed last night, too, right? Yeah, she, right? Were you there? No, I didn't. I thought about it. Oh, no. you thought about it. So you were yeah. visualizing it, but you didn't make it. Wow. I didn't. Oh, so close. That would have been an amazing moment. <laughs> Are you loving how much I'm saying amazing? Someone in the audience is, like, threatening me. They're like, you're dead. Stop it. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you tonight. And I'm well, going to love it. You want to do one more? Yeah, let's All do right. one more. Okay. If you were going to start a creative project for fun, mm -hmm. would you... Dress up as your mom and make YouTube videos. Write a screenplay where you play a superhero. Start a Cindy Lauper cover band with your friends. Or record yourself farting Britney Spears Toxic from beginning to end. I think the last one's the one you choose, because you already previously mentioned that to us. I'll do second to the last one. Maybe I'm stuck. The Cindy Lauper. Ooh, it's incorrect. Ooh. You know what? The answer is dress up as your mom and make YouTube videos, which Daniel yeah. does very well. Check them out. Excellent. They're hilarious. Clearly, I don't know what Daniel <laughs> but, <laughs> does. But you are yeah. still amazing. Because we all are amazing for being here. Yeah. Thank you so much. You, you are free now to go live your amazing life on your own. Thank I you. I appreciate you so much. I definitely Thank feel you. a little more amazing because no one else volunteered. Oh, yeah. You oh. were the only one. So now I'm doing a shout out to them. So. Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank all you so right. much. So, wow. All right. That was great. That was the best experience of my life. The best, second best of my life. The first one was starting this entire day. Oh, my gosh. Really? But the next best experience of my life, I think, is going to be to go try and talk to Daniel. Or do you think we should? I think he oh, might yeah. be I'm excited. here. And if he wants he's to here. talk to us. Because he's going to get ready to do a build after this build up. Yes. So let's find Daniel. All right, let's see what he's doing. Is he busy? Ooh, let's go. Ooh. OK, I think this is his room. I'm just going to knock. You're just going to knock? Just gonna knock. Oh, Straight oh, through, okay. Oh, is right it just down. open? Oh. Oh, oh hey, oh Daniel. Yeah. Oh, hi. I have a oh. microphone too. Oh my goodness. He was we just all looking have microphones. In the mirror. Wow, you were just, you were just the staring in the mirror. Well, you know, that is what one does when they reflect before they're about to be yeah. on camera. Oh. Uh, you know what? I haven't done that. And usually when I look back, I'm like, wow, I'm, I look really bad. That's, that might be it. Yeah. I think for, for going forward, because we can only look forward. Yes. Just, you know, gaze into your eyes and, and tell yourself that you're pretty. That's what I do. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so we were talking a little bit about your dog barks. Yeah, I have some. Oh, can you? Okay, could you do a Dalmatian who who hasn't drank a lot of water today? <laughs> he needs a little bit. Yeah, he needs water. I, I, had about I could that. feel how I know, dry like, it was. Wow, that was really specifically painful. I, I feel know. like Here, someone feel just like... someone just like made a next door app like post, and they were yeah. like, "There's someone who's abusing their dog. Get There's on it." There's a poor Dalmatian that needs. Some Somebody help. Hydration. Yeah. The build studio is going to get in trouble if we're not giving their dog water, and then they'll show up and we'll be like, Animal Services, we don't have a dog. Great. What have you done? Mm. Blame Daniel. I know. I'm so know. sorry. Here, do a happy dog instead. Happy Chihuahua? Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Baby, baby. It's cute. <laughs> uh oh. Tree. Okay. Uh -oh. I'm going to get, get you a water. Uh, something, please. Here, oh, I feel like a Dalmatian over here. I'm going to get him a water. Uh oh, get him water. I, wanna, I, wanna, I don't want to wear you out with your dog barks, oh, but I please. also want to show off a little bit because I can do okay. it a little bit. Do you want to get out? I've got an aggressive. Little dog. Do it! Ah. Oh, I've heard a couple. Yeah, those are bad. Those are the ones that jump out of purses. Okay, wait, what was that? Those are the dogs that just like surprise you and jump out of a purse. They're the worst. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then no matter what you do, they don't like you. 
There's nothing you can do because they only like one person. They have like one god, and then like everybody else is Satan. Yeah, they're so moody, those dogs. They're the worst. But thank you so much because you've been such a sweet puppy to us. Yes. And we really appreciate that. Yes. Oh. And we cannot wait you for your bill. Wait. Oh. Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, we got a little leg to it. Oh, all right, well, we're going to let you go. We know you got to go get building soon. Yeah. Getting to fleet. Yes. Oh, bye. I'll miss you, but I'll be watching him on Build next. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on the Build Up. Check right. out Daniel Francesi on Build coming up in just a minute. Welcome to Build. What is up? I'm your host, Matt Forte. Uh, we are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guest is in the midst of his, yes, your amazing comedy tour. Uh, just some of his dates include a show at the Lori Beachman Theater tomorrow. That's Thursday, July 26th. And this August, he'll be headlining at the Burbank Comedy Festival as well. His shit Italian mom say YouTube series has racked up like a million on top of a million views. He Apparently, he's oddly good at impersonating dogs. Uh, and of course, of course, you know him for his iconic performance as Damien and Mean Girls. Ladies and gentlemen, please, the great Danielle Francesi is right here. Make some noise. What up, everybody? Up. Let them know. <laughs> how you doing? Oh, I'm doing so good, man. Thank you for asking. How how are you doing? How that was an incredible intro. Like, I, stop, really? I kind of want you to do it like at like supermarkets at the deli oh. counter for me. <laughs> Just be like, he's about to order bologna. But he's fantastic. This man loves American cheese, but don't, yeah, no, of course, I'll do it. Slice I'll do it. it thin, like Nana says. Always, always. Uh, I do, yeah, that's funny that you asked, I do freelance deli counter introductions all the time. That's really? Yeah, okay, we're going to work on this. This is the, what I do. The little numbers game is for the birds. This is my side hustle. All right, we'll do it. <laughs> Not as lucrative as the uh, suit business that you found yourself in, but, uh, you know, I make a little bit of change. Um, Daniel, how are you doing, man? How is life these days? You've got great. this amazing tour. It's, yes, it's yeah. amazing. I love I it. I call it that because that's all anybody says these days. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's your mom. That's amazing. You guys hang out. That's amazing. Everything is kind of amazing, I guess. Or at least we have to tell ourselves it is, don't we? No, not everything's amazing, but my audience is amazing. Your I audience is amazing. So that's why that's fantastic. you come to my show. Yes, you're amazing. Is that like a regional thing? Do you find like it's different when you travel? Like, does everybody say everything? A little amazing? bit. Here in New York, people, like, I'm like, my mom was like, why does everybody in LA say everything's amazing? I'm like, well, you're from Brooklyn. You just say things are phenomenal. <laughs> She's like, you're right. That's amazing. <laughs> so. that, that is. I, I was just about to say that's amazing. <laughs> um, well, I'm so excited you're here, man. How's the tour going so far? I mean, I, I, I saw well, you got I, a lot of dates coming. It's yeah. been an awesome um, experience. You know, I've been... Uh, colleges, theaters, and clubs. Yeah. So some colleges I go and they're like, we're expecting like 100 students and then like 450 will show up wow. and like be dressed like Damien. And like, <laughs> I mean, the response has been awesome. And then, you know, other times like I'm, you know, 11 a.m. on a lunchroom table. <laughs> like, it's just been like all the, ki all the gamut. I want to make sure we can reach all the different parts of the country. Like no venue is too big or too small. Just trying to like... Uh, get out there and just make people laugh. That's pretty amazing. Do you ever have those back to back? It's amazing. Like it's I got amazing. you on one. Yeah, I know. One. It's going to yeah. happen every You're gonna time. You're going to have like an amazing jar. We're going to get a little like counter yeah. on the bottom and just every time Something. it's going to be amazing. Um, if we could, <laughs> if we, uh, do you ever find yourself uh, li literally back to back? Like you'll riding high, just did a, a 450 seat room. Oh, yeah. And then the next day you're like still in that zone and they're like, <laughs> uh, and they'll be eating lunch while you're doing this. So Something, just, there, sometimes it's like, well, you're going to finish this gig and then you're going to get in the car and drive back to LAX and then you're gonna fly to New Mexico and then you're gonna like do a gig there and then you're gonna like fly back to New York and then drive into Connecticut. It's just like, you know, it's a tour. It's just like that, it's, you know, the fabulous life of Daniel Francesi. He drives his own rental car. Seeing me get out of a Fiat is hysterical by the way. But like, yeah, so I do what I can. I do what I can, you know, just uh, to spread merriment. And recently I just got a date in Scotland. No. Yeah, they asked me to do this event. We put it online and I sold out 100 seats in one minute. Oh put up God. another one, sold out in an hour. So now we have a third one. I'm gonna start going. I'm gonna start going international. We're gonna start adding more dates uh, outside of the U.S. Well, now. Is Scotland? Is this gonna be the first internet? Is that this the is the first the official wow. um, outside the U.S. Uh, That's super exciting. Date. Yeah. A little nervous too, because you. Nah, not, no, at, not all. at all. I love my peeps. I mean, 
you know, I love my peeps. I trust my jokes. I just want to, like, get there and have a good time already. You say you trust your jokes. What is that process? Well, how did you get there? How did you arrive at a point where you could trust your jokes? What does it look like for you to, to, to get ready for the road? I'm not a person who's, like, really afraid of, like, uh, getting dirty or going backwards. I always said I was, like, a blue-collar type actor. So some people who maybe were at my, like, like recognizability level might not go and do, like, a random open mic. But I'll take a joke out to, like, like the dirtiest of dirtiest open mics, like, a hundred times before I take it to a club and just really try to you know, uh, workshop it. And I've been doing that a lot with the colleges because um, it's not on my main tour, but when I do do a college, I do an AMA for a half hour afterwards and I just like yeah. basically do a lot of crowd work and work with a lot of the students and stuff and like come up with jokes there. So I've been like creating my own little open mics after each show like uh, to see what makes people laugh. That's a really great environment for you to, to sort of work that muscle and flex that, to just totally. sit there and hang out and, and talk to them forever. And, and, and get, get silly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. They're kind of into that. So that's amazing. So pretty much... Uh, old school comedian method, you're hitting the pavement, you're going out there, you're putting in the hours, and you're going to open mics, and you're trying it out. I don't really know any other way. Yeah. Uh, to me, everything's always like a little bit harder, I feel like, than it is for somebody else, but then I get like I get to reap a bigger reward, so I'm okay with like doing the work. Is it harder because they have a preconceived notion of like, oh, I'm going to go see Damien? Or, That's like, part of it, too. Yeah. Like, my, my show's not really dirty, not like for any other reason, just that it just isn't. Yeah. Like, it just worked out that way. It wasn't like I consciously was like, I'm going to do a clean show, yeah. but I just don't really have a lot of, and I think it's kind of that, like, when people expect a certain thing for me and the kind of characters I portray. They expect me to be silly and outspoken, but not necessarily like off-putting, you know. So I don't really have a lot of that in my show. I don't. Know, I think I got weirded out the first time I saw Bob Saget like say a curse. I was like, "What's happening, mom?" Yeah, that, <laughs> that is the definition of off-putting. If you're not expecting it, that <laughs> if comes you don't out expect of left it, like, Yeah, like yeah. so. I don't want to have to work against that. I just sort of played into what people like me for, and that is, you know, um, just being a silly Italian guy. <laughs> Well, we love you as a silly Italian guy, so what it's good. Do? It's good that that's your natural habitat. <laughs> yeah. um, how long ago did you start doing the stand-up, man? How long have you been um, in the game? I, I studied stand-up when I was young, like, all the time. I knew really? everybody's set when I was in high school. I knew everybody's name and their sets and, like, everything. And then I think that um, I felt when I first got to New York City again um, and I was, like, uh, starting to try it, I felt a little inauthentic because I was closeted. So I didn't feel, I didn't want to be like, well, I met this girl the other day. Right. You know, and like be, so every time I try to do stuff, which is funny because that's not even like a core of what my comedy actually ended up being about. But I just felt like, I don't know, I, I didn't want to like sound gay or act weird. I don't know, I was under a lot of intense pressure, um, you know, put on from all these different places to like not be myself. So once I came out and I felt like I could like be free to like be me, then now I can't shut up. <laughs> so, it's like, so there was a correlation between uh, you didn't really try stand up and until you were fully comfortable in your. I tried it a little bit here and there, but I just, like I said, I just yeah, felt, you just had to. Like now, I feel like I could say anything about anything, and just like it doesn't matter. Like I could do whatever I want. Do you remember your first set where you had that feeling and just like what that was like, like that? Yeah, it was. It was there? definitely an, an epiphany to me that that was something that was going to be that I could put out there that would be received. Like I was really. Uh, floored by that but I guess it's that adage like you know what would you do if you knew you wouldn't fail yeah. like I just was like I'm not going to care if I fail at this I'm just going to try it yeah. and to try something after I've already established myself as like whatever a tv film actor like to go try do doing more stuff like stand-up I think that even the stand-up clubs are like oh we have enough actors in here this is for stand-ups like right. I had a fight against a bunch of different you know, uh, kinds of uh, stigmas to like get to be able to do it. And, but I'm so happy now. It's been really great. I feel like I've earned my stripes in a lot of ways. Yeah, no, it sounds and like you it, yeah. paid your dues, man. You put in the time and you were out there doing, the, doing it away. What were some of the, what were some of your idols? You were saying you were memorizing everybody's act and all that stuff. And influences oh, and idols. I mean, I felt, for me, what's actually really interesting is when Comedy Central first started and like when um, the Comedy Channel first started, uh, they didn't have a lot of original programming. It was like a new idea to have a channel that was dedicated to comedy. Yeah. So they went back and showed all the original greats like Sid Caesar's Your Show of Shows and Ernie Kovacs and Milton Berle. And you know, these are a lot of the people who I got to learn from the origins, like the, yeah. king, the original kings of comedy. And like I, I, when I was little, I just watched all that stuff over again because they were airing it. You know, which is so great because you could expose your kids to whatever you want to expose them to. So my dad was like, and my grandma were like really big fans of that kind of comedy too. And, right. you know, in my family, you survived if you could laugh. We were a very teasing family. Well, so. that was what I was going to ask because like, you know, I briefly mentioned that the uh, smash hit the, the shit Italian moms say. And like I was telling you in the green room, I come from an Italian family as well. And there was always, uh, laughter was a big part of it. Making each other laugh, putting on little shows for the family. Were you that kid? Did you ever like perform for the family? Or oh, was it? Man. Well, that's right. 
where I got my start. I got my yeah. start on the coffee table circuit because <laughs> my family, my, my grandfather had 12 brothers. They all lived on the same block, a block in Brooklyn and Gravesend. And like if I learned, uh, you know, the ABCs, I'd be on, I'd be like on Aunt Nina's table, then you know Aunt yeah. Rose's table, then across the street, and I would do everybody's like table. And then it was like it was like a circuit. And I learned early on that I could do things that could entertain people and make them feel good and like like to have me around. And more importantly, give me chocolate and candy. Yeah, that was what. Um, yeah, about. that was like the number one. Uh, for maybe a dollar, you know? Um, so that's where I, like, kind of started out. But in my family, like, when I say, like, my parents were young when they had me. My dad was a, a ball buster, you know? And he was just, like, <laughs> if me and my brother were in a fight, he'd be like, would you say? And would you say? And whoever was funnier kind of got away with that the, yeah. <laughs> so we were always, like, pitted against each other and, like, roasting each other constantly. Um, and now we're re really close and just all laugh about everybody else. It's so. pretty uh I almost said amazing. Amazing. Me. It's amazing. Uh, um, <laughs> I love, love, love the, the YouTube series you did. There was one word, though, that I felt uh, it was either an omission or maybe I missed it. But, and maybe you just didn't have this one growing up. But did you ever hear they ever call somebody a bacha galoop? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was yeah. looking for Bacha Galoop. I was like, he's got everything I else think, in here. You know, there's so yeah, many things that we had to cut out of that, if you could imagine, <laughs> that like I could go on for years and years and years with net, just rolling tape yeah. and like doing stuff. A lot of my comedy talks about my mom's stuff like that, too. But we did miss the Bacha Galoop. But we, I think Bacha. we traded it for a Dutaru. Oh, you got it. You know, we, like, we put a Dutaru in. He's a Dutaru. Yeah. Where did that whole idea? Nobody makes a video like that thinking it's gonna hit five million or anything. Or did you know? Were actually, you like, it's actually crazy because people have stolen the video and uploaded it in other environments. So it's even more than that. It's like twenty million yeah, something. Yeah, huge. and it has such a great following. And Italian mom has her own Facebook page that's verified, <laughs> that has a bunch of funny Italian content that I try to steal from everybody else. But like, <laughs> but essentially, what it is is it's like. Um, I think it's nostalgic. It takes people back yeah. to like, you know, remembering me and my friend uh, Michelle Seglia, who does hair on American Horror Story. She's another Italian from here. And like, uh, we, the day before I thought of doing this, she was like, you can come upstairs if you want to my apartment, but like, I have nothing to offer you, not even a piece of cake. <laughs> and like, we just laughed about that sentiment because it just sounded so, um, you know, my, our moms. Yeah. And then it was like, uh, I was like, wow, I started thinking about it. They were doing the whole shit says meme. It was like really growing and, and it, it was like right in the like week that that was happening. And I'm like, I've got to do this or someone else is going to do it. Yeah. And I kept checking and refreshing and nobody had done it yet. And I just ran to Ross, bought a bunch of ladies' clothes. <laughs> we told the attendant, we're like, we're surprising our mom with a funny video. We didn't know what to say. We were just like, it doesn't matter. Like the, the uh, dressing room attendant. And we got like all, I got all the clothes. And then we just started filming the next day. I mean, my friend Lisa. That's got to be such an exhilarating like emotion, like feeling when you, you find that unclaimed real estate, when you're like, I have an idea. And you go to the <laughs> internet and you're like, wait, surely Google is broken. Like, how, how can I not find this? You know, a like, lot of oh, times I, I have those ideas. And then I just, I'm like, how am I going to pull this together? Like on this weekend? on this day get all these people together to do this it's really hard to execute yeah. but the stars aligned that one it was just too good not to yeah, I mean yeah. you know we had to it didn't matter how much it cost or how or what the resources were we like made it happen and we shot that whole video in Beverly Hills did you really <laughs> yeah people always think it's New York because we found things that had like Italian flags or we found like yeah. the deli is actually a liquor store like a it's tiny really? deli it's like a really a liquor store like we just found little things that like we, we, we and we you know how hard it is to shoot in Beverly Hills and frame out palm trees there's not a palm tree in that yeah, that's those, that surprised. series. Like, oh, no way. And it was really difficult for us. And then like we did stuff like the lasagna that we eat, we fed the crew, you know. Yeah. So um it's yeah. amazing. What'd your mom say when she finally saw it? My mom's like, it's a masterpiece. <laughs> like she loves she was actually she was I actually she lives in Florida now and she was at the beach and she was like, Diana, hand me the towel, like yelling at my sister. And some lady and someone came up to me and said, You know who you sound like? Have you ever seen shit at time mom say? She's like, That's my son. And she had to like pull out her ID and everything and like prove it. Um, people oh recognize God. her just from her own voice sounding like my impression, which I think is like the greatest compliment in the world. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. And it's happened a few times to her. That's <laughs> that they're like, You're just like this character. And she's like, It's me. <laughs> Oh, so. I love that she's embraced it. That's that's wonderful. Yeah, and she's also become sort of like, uh, in her own right, like a little bit of an LGBTQ icon. She yeah. she um, had a moment where, uh, when we had uh, marriage equality, that one of her friends wrote something bad on Facebook. She went crazy. She went live and started like just talking about it. And now she's like, I'm a gay mom. I'm a mom for all the gays. If it, if your mom doesn't want you, I'll be your mom. And they all go meet her at DragCon, and everybody brings her cards and presents and. Oh and she rides on like the Pride float with me, like in San Francisco Pride. Like she's just like the best. That is the greatest story. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I didn't see it coming. I just like a wooden spoon on the back of my head. 
I didn't see it coming, but now she's, you know, and a little activist. I've got to ask, you know, uh, the mutual Italian background. I had uh, Vinny and his mom from Jersey Shore in here once. I asked them this question. I was firmer in my belief then. I believe I'm a little more relaxed now. I think we all have to come together. Were it's you gravy. A no. There we go. That was <laughs> it. Sauce <laughs> of gravy. I'm a gravy house. It's a gravy person. Thank all right. you. All right. Well, you know what? Then hell with it. I'm sticking to it. Vinny's wrong. I knew it's where it was sauce. coming. It's I knew gravy. where it was coming. Yeah. As that's exactly what it was. All right, that's the whole purpose of the really interview. It? That was the question. I, I, yeah, I'll show you the freaking <laughs> card, dude. Sauce or gravy? It's right there. Second one, sauce or gravy. That's amazing. For people that don't understand this, this is a giant. This no, is a big it's debate. a big thing. It's a big d debate within the Italian community. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. It's either sauce or gravy. And, you know, Honestly, it's really not a big deal. Stand hard on one side or the other. Yeah, it's just whatever you were told when you. I were just little. knew it. I yeah. knew. I saw it in your so Italian you can, eyes. Well, fair. <laughs> Uh, fair enough. All right, we're going to, in just a second, we're going to throw it over to the audience, but I, I wouldn't be doing my job, and I, and I warned you of this backstage. I, I've got to ask you at least one uh, Mean Girls question. Fair. Okay? Fair. Uh, I'd be interested to see if it's one that I haven't heard before, because that's well, rare. That, this is, I was going to say, you probably get this all the time. Oh, there we go. Well, no, I mean just in general, the fact that you get well, a Mean Girls question. Well, then I have question. an answer. But I, well, let's find out. Let's see. I'm <laughs> Let me ask it. Let's see how we do here. Um... Your, your character, I called it iconic before I stand by. Everybody's quoting it all the time. I mean, did you, not did you know, because nobody ever knows, but you have this script, right, this wonderful script from Tina Fey. Uh, how much of those iconic lines did you find in the moment? Like, did how could you have known good for you, Glenn Coco, you go, Glenn Coco, was going to, a whole meme economy and civilization has been erected around these lines, and there's meme upon meme upon quote. Did, did you have an opportunity to ask Ad lib any of those? Did an ad lib make it? I did make in um, I Want My Pink Shirt Back was mine. That was yours. Yes. I, I actually, I wanted to be like, I want my pink shirt back, bitch. But he was like, nah, just do it this way. And, I, you know, I did it uh, like a double uh, speak. I want my pink shirt back. What's the one you get? Uh, people, um, did they yell it uh, at you? always bring up Glenn Coco to me. Glenn Coco's the big one. pink shirt. Yeah. Um, Nana takes her wig off when she's drunk. Hair full of secret. I mean, I get something. Yeah. Ask me in a spa orange. I said I was going to interview you, and my friend, I, my phone was just littered with gifts of she doesn't even go here. <laughs> uh, just like this. The, I, <laughs> I was like, that is going to ruin an assembly somewhere. <laughs> like, I just knew it would have, like, a long history of doing that. Um, yeah, you know, I think the role became iconic because Tina's face script was really hysterical. Yeah. I mean, it was the funniest script I ever read up until that point. I was laughing out loud, like, every page. Um, but also because... You know, Damien was a character who was not uh, made fun of for being fat and not made fun of for being uh, gay. And it was kind of cool to see that. I mean, even the too gay to function thing isn't that bad, and it was in the burn book. <laughs> you know, it's like, so I think I had never seen a script where my character wasn't like the wimp or the bully. He just was able to be, you know, like a gay character, I mean. And I thought that that was really cool. Um, on the 10th anniversary, I got, which, which prompted me to come out, uh, this guy wrote me a letter. He's like, I was in uh, eighth grade and I was beat up for being chubby. I was beat up for being sissy. He's like, but then your movie came out and I went into ninth grade. And on the first day of school, the popular senior girls came up to me and were like, you're like Damien, come sit with us. And he was like, and I know you drastically changed my high school career and I just wanted to like thank you for that. And it really moved me because I didn't have something to look at like that. And maybe my life would have been different. Maybe I've been doing stand up since I'm 16 had I had had someone that said it was okay just I could just see somebody be okay and survive a, a movie or survive a, a lunch in a movie <laughs> or something without being picked on. I'm I'm gonna I've been trying to find other adjectives, but that that is amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Truly, uh, and I I imagine because uh, you're human and you don't have to admit it here, but anybody that gets anything repeated to them over the course of 14 years, I'm sure it gets old at some point. You know, like people it, ask me that all the time. It like, doesn't. Really. It doesn't. You. Here's the thing. Like. If people are annoying, it's annoying. Right. You know? But if people are earnest or they're having fun with it or they're, like, filled with, like, happiness and joy, I would never, like, pop their balloon. Yeah. Like, I'm, yeah. like, all about that. Like, yeah. you know, like if, if, and especially if I caused it, great. Be happy. Yeah. Like, live your happy life. Like, yeah, okay, I'll say it or I'll do whatever. But when people are, like, you know, you won't even, eh, or, like, expect something <laughs> out of me or have, like, the meh, meh kind of, like, tone in their voice. <laughs> I'm like, get, no matter what they're asking, it's... Fuck that guy anyway. Yes. Who walks around Who like that? Who needs that? Who needs that vibe? People are like that. The, well, I didn't, uh, 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 you know, and I'm just like, you know? No. But if they're just like, hey, uh, 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 it depends on the register. 
So you can get a, you can get away with a lot in the upper tones of the register. I love the dialogue there. That was perfect. Uh, we're gonna all right. We got some audience. Do we have what? Yeah, we got two. Okay, great. So we got some microphones in the room. I want to make sure we get them. First questions right here in the front. Go Hi, for Daniel. it. Hi. Hi. I'm Pauline. Do you have a twin, Isabel? I could tell you're both gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. I've been watching Mean Girls since I was in middle school. I'm 25, by the way. Oh, thanks. That makes me feel old. No, I'm yeah, I'm old too. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm wondering, how do you like? doing comedy while you're not acting while you're not acting. I love it because before I was really uh, aggressively doing comedy and making money at it like I was waiting for like the right script you know any script to come along to sort of like fill the fill the void of performance but now I have performance under my control I can go out and perform any night of the week and whether I'm getting paid or not and just really be fulfilled and I could be doing like a scary drama and not worry that people are going to forget I'm funny. I feel like I, I could just <laughs> always be funny every day that I want to be funny. And it feels really good. I think that uh, for the first time, I've truly found myself doing this. So thanks for asking. You're That's welcome. wonderful. Thank you for that question. We got, was that one more? OK, we're going to do one more. It's going to come from back here on the red couch. Hi. So Mean Girls is now on Broadway. So I was wondering if you've seen it. And if so, what do you think? I did see it, and I love it. Gray Henson was incredible. He got a Tony nomination. It was interesting. It was like the gay kid going to see the gay show with, you know, with the gay character he created, starring a gay kid playing the gay character in a gay musical. I thought it was going to, like, explode into purple glitter, but we all survived. <laughs> and, you know, the musical's its own thing, and I think that thing's fabulous. It's like it goes deeper into Damien's life, and I got to find out more things about my character. I thought that was great. And they're just so good. It's impossible not to like it. Um, it's a fantastic show. Forgive my ignorance. Have you ever done anything on stage? Um, I, I actually set out to do Broadway. I haven't done Broadway yet. That's like the one it's really, on the list. It, was a, it was the first thing on the list and I haven't done it yet. Huh. Um, but yeah, I've done a ton of musicals. I wrote Jersey Shore, co-wrote co Jersey Shore as a cool freaking rock Shore. opera. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> that played <laughs> off Broadway here. And um, I was in Doxy's God and off Broadway and I've done a couple of things, but I haven't actually done official Broadway yet, but it's really something that I want to do really bad. So anyone who's listening. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mr. Producer, I'm talking to you, sir. <laughs> um, I'm ready. Uh, I think we're ready as well, man. You know, I, I, I'm so happy you came through and stopped by to hang out and talk to us. It, well, it's thank awesome. You. And everybody, to be please here. come see my show, which is right near Broadway. Yes. I'm, I'm as close as I'm going to get so far. I wrote these things down. These are very important things I want to tell the world. All right, so you got a show at the Lori Beachman Theater Thursday, July 26th. That's tomorrow. And in early August, you're going to be headlining the Burbank Comedy Festival. That's it's the beginning of August. Where else can people go to get more dates, more info? Tell them where you to go. You can go to whatsupdanny.com. Um, and see all of my dates on there, or I have monthly shows at Flappers and Burbank and the Comedy Store in Hollywood, and I try to come here as much as I can and work Lori Beachman out. So let's do it. There we go. Let's do it. Thank you to you. Thank you to you guys. Everybody, please make some noise for the incredible, the awesome, the crazy right here. Thank you.